What's up, everyone? Levrak here of Defensor Arts TV, and we are actually doing an art study slash maybe art process of painting, digital painting. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, video. So let me lower that uh, volume here. So yeah, we got some music going on in the background. That You might be familiar to that song. That's actually a song from uh, Katawa Shoujo. And uh, I don't own... Uh, basically, that's their copyrights and all that stuff. That Everything from them belongs to them. I'm just basically playing the song here. Just because... Um, just because, what do you call them? I'm advertising the game, Katawa Shoujo. You guys should check out that. But yeah, I'm going to be doing a digital painting of uh, something like this. We're gonna try making a digital painting, like make it look painterly than just like this. Um, it's gonna look more like an oil paint looking kind of thing. So yeah, that's how we're gonna do that. Cool thing about uh, painting on uh, on a uh, digital platform is that you can play with layers. So we will start doing that by um, maybe figuring out where the sun will go, like say, um, Basically, what I would like to do is do the light colors first before we do the dark colors. Because when you do the oil painting here, um, I know you can barely see the my uh, work station here because my face is blocking that area. But I click on the... Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say. Since you guys are uh, basically using Photoshop or you can use Manga Studio... The brushes, I would say you should get something that's similar to oil paint, that has like a um, feel of oil paint, if you want to give it like that oil touch uh, way. So basically, I have a brush here on a Manga Studio that says oil paint or oil paint flat brush. I like to use that basically. It basically makes the paint looks like this. Let me grab um, a color or something and I'll show you how it looks like. Basically, the brush will look like this or something. It looks very painterly-like. So I'll undo that, Command-Z to undo, or Control-Z to undo on a PC. So yeah, basically we do that. We will start out making the, um, the brightest area, which is the sun from the image. Uh, if you guys forgot what image I'm doing, uh, this is I'm gonna try to um, make this painterly. Not I'm not gonna do the whole image. I might crop it a bit, so you guys will see a certain scene or something. Like I'll put the sun. Uh, let's see, this is, will be like the focal point. Will be around. Um, I guess we'll put the uh, sun around here. This is basically we're gonna do the sun like that. We'll just draw circleish color. Um, maybe I should have made the sun a little more brighter, a lighter color of that. So we'll just try to paint over that. It's kind of hard to do because when you paint over white over something, it's kind of hard. And then you work your way around it by uh, making a darker color. Getting a darker color around that. Uh, not too dark, but maybe something like this. And you get that kind of like brush tone. Usually I like to start with the backgrounds first before we actually do anything. But usually when you do a uh, painting like this free, la free hand drawn painting, you just uh, wing the whole thing <laughs> in a way. It's a little different than the actual uh, painting uh, in general. Um, uh, usually when you uh, actually paint it, you a la prima it or like set the drawing base. So that's how you do the stuff in the first thing. I mean, maybe in the next video, I'll show you guys how to uh, do the setup of a painting before you actually set that up. Let me uh, blend these guys together since... Um, we're doing a painting, so painting needs a blend. Blend together. We'll use the we press the J button to blend it for Manga Studio. Um, as for the um, Photoshop, you basically use um, a kind of um, 
what you might call it, um, the thumb tool that blurs it or smudge tool, which should do the same work. And that's how we get the orange look to that. And now we grab the brush tool again, make the brush a little bigger this time. And we just make it like a lion's mane in a way. And this is how you do oil painting digitally. You just whoosh it out there. Don't be so rough on the, don't press so hard. Just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. If we are actually painting, you'll just be basically use, holding the brush like this and whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. But since it's on a tablet, like basis, since I'm using an Intos tablet, you just go like a whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that exactly, but... Um... Oh, okay. Uh, we kind of made a little mistake. Uh, what happened is um, there is something on the bottom here. That is similar. Hold on. Let me grab the yellow here. And we have to do the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. See, it gets that mud color when you... Um, it's not a good mud color you want to see on a painting. Mud colors are not really good. Uh, to describe mud, it's kind of like brownish color in a way. I don't know how to really describe it. I mean, teachers try to teach me what mud colors look like and... Um, I still can't figure that out sometimes, um, but you just basically make it like really nice and neat, kind of like that. There we go. And uh, the colors you want to do around it is like the same color as the sun that is showing there. And then you just basically uh, grab a big brush. I like to work with big brushes in general because it gets the whole idea done. Um, yeah, so you just get that set up. You grab more of that brush again and do this again. And you blend things together. Make sure it blends together because it is a painting after all. And uh, from there, you grab this brush tool. Oops, wrong color. We need that orange. And um, we'll just continue making it painterly-like. But yeah, basically, I'm just showing you how to do sceneries technically. And yeah, from there, we basically have like almost a background set up here. Oops, I didn't mean to get the green. Um, that's not the color I want. I want it more like an orange red. Maybe I need to put it more in the red area. There we go. That's the orange red I kind of wanted. You just basically do that. Make it all whooshy. The only thing is when you use these uh, stuff, um, it makes the thing kind of like glitchy in a way. Makes the program a little glitchy when playing something because you got multiple things open or gl the program itself is glitchy or something like that. You want to have like a nice high processing uh, computer when you uh, do your painting like stuff I did a whistle <laughs> when I was talking I don't know if you guys heard that hopefully that doesn't bother you maybe, maybe get some orange going on here and just basically just make the sky look very skyish <laughs> Speaking about Sky, that's funny. That's the name of one of my um, friends that I collaborate with uh, here on YouTube, Sky. We do videos together, Katao Shoujo or other games, but lately we've just only been doing Katao Shoujo. Because we do the voice acting and stuff involved. 
There you go, you get like your sky set up here. Let me just blur everything together now. So you get that painterly look, which is required when you're... Well, that I'm actually going for. You want to have like a blur because since everything is like supposed to be like um background atmosphere, everything should be... Oops. Going out like that, and then this going out like this. Maybe we need some more of the brush of that. Oops. Um. There we go. Get that nice tone going on there. And then you get the white. Let me get some more of that white. Because it's needed. There you go. Give it that tone. Make it look like it's there. And then usually sun is usually white because it's burning hot. Hold on, let me make that brush smaller so I can get that nice exploding of look bray effect. And then decrease the br blending tool. And there we go, we got the sun. Burning hot red in the sky. <laughs> All right, so we got that set up. We got all that set up on the on the sky and atmosphere. Usually, I would like to get the since it's like layers. Since we're doing layers, I mean, sorry, I'm getting tongue twister. We call this uh, background. Oh, we can capitalize. No, we'll just lowercase background. This one's gonna be the uh, mid ground, which is the, which is the, that thing, the green, green, hilly stuff. So we'll call this mid ground. And the foreground is the, um, the wheat. So we got that set up. Um, so we get the mid ground. We need like green, color green. We don't want to have like so much of a uh, green. So let's sketch out the green thing. So I'm gonna use the regular oil brush. Increase the size of it, and we'll just do this. Uh, we might need to make it a little smaller. But we get the idea. We're sketching out the idea of the landscape. So we just color that in. Uh, we can cheat a little bit by doing this uh, K and lift it up a bit. And there we go. Okay, grab the brush tool again and draw that over. I'm gonna make it smooth. And the background is more. We grab that, give it a gray tone. No, we're gonna give it more of a flat brush. Oops. Now we're gonna actually give it more of an orange look and raise that a bit. And there we go, we got the flat brush set up. There we go, we got the mid ground almost set up here and 
we're gonna grab the color of this because we're gonna fix the fix the ground here and then since it has a shadow make this a little darker and uh, there's a tree there oops keep accidentally drawing something there when there's nothing there I'll we'll just draw a tree right there we're not really exactly copying exactly but we're trying to get the idea of like originality here and I'm gonna get the tree set up here there we go all right so we got the tree down here we can actually give this more of a yellowish color um, we're gonna make that a little yellowish and give more of a feck of a green tone and and then we're gonna try to make this a little dark kind of funny because uh, a professor used to say duck uh, every single time he talks so it became an inside joke among the art students which is hilarious so we're drawing that the uh, reason we're making this uh, lighter green is because the Sun is like shining on that on the top part and we get that highlight looking thing going on. Hold on, made a mistake right there. So you erase that. So you get that set up, and then you grab the same color here, but we need a darker tone. Because the ground gets darker here. Okay, so we get that set up, and then we need this one. We'll get a lighter tone here. A little bit grayish tone because this is middle ground. looking at the uh, image too at the same time aside from like looking at the so we get the idea of like what we're doing here and then we get this set up there's like something here yeah it's good to start off with some images to, uh, before you actually draw the thing out because uh, you don't want to be confused why this certain thing looks like that Yeah, it looks like like miniature trees there. There we go. Yeah. And there we go. We got that set up. And now we have to do the uh, the tree that goes up there. So we're gonna grab the color of this, and we're gonna make this a little darker. It's not exactly like how the picture is, but we're gonna try to put the tree like in this area because we can and we shall and the tree has a lot of gaping holes because of the leaves so I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller and we're gonna continue doing the background stuff it's been a long time since I did a lot of background stuff arts maybe I might do more of back into the oil paintings and stuff get get the hang of it again so I don't know if I'll do a video of that of me painting in real time of traditional arts but we'll see what happens so we get the idea of like what a tree is supposed to be it's like a, a weird blob of 
things and So you get the idea of like that. Usually I don't like to zoom into my artwork of this because you want to like uh, see how it is in the whole. You do the zooming in later when you want to do more details and stuff. But that's not the whole idea of what I'm doing right here right now. Um, we'll grab this and make a dark tone of shadow. There we go. We got a shadow going on right there. So you got the whole idea of the background. Let me fix the. Let me fix that part up there. There we go. And then we'll just blend that. And there we go. Got atmosphere going on here, and we got that uh, setting. All right. So mid ground needs to be blended together. So we'll just do that. We'll start doing that. some areas that needs to be blended no that doesn't need to be blended so we got the mid ground background now we have to do this foreground now so we'll make a new layer and call that foreground So usually I like to start off with the background, then mid-ground, and then foreground afterwards. So what we see here from the scenery is like a uh, wheat stuff. I didn't exactly copy it exactly if you saw that the tree is on this side and not on this side. I just did it like that because um, it makes it a little different, but you get the whole idea of like setting it all up here and doing the painterly way. Well, the reason the tree is black is because of the shadows shining on it, like the um, sun directly on it, and just like shines down that way. It's all direction and lighting, basically. So we're gonna do the foreground. So let me get that set up for a moment. Before I do that, I just want to see what we're doing here. All right. So we got that set up. So we'll do foreground. Foreground is like a little more uh, yellowish color. Yellowish color. And then we get the uh, flat brush. And we'll just do this. A ton of like this. There's a lot of uh, things that we could do with the foreground. We can just like. This is the toughest part because um, since we're just doing it like in a painterly way, it takes time to uh, do these strokes. And you have to do these strokes in real time. Real life, I mean. We didn't need to do it traditionally. This is how you actually set it up. You, you do the strokes and take the time to actually do them. Which sounds like a pain, but it'll be worth it in the end. And yeah, we get the stroke set up there. You have to mix and match the strokes because uh, it's wheat. They go in different directions. And grass goes in many directions and forms and sizes you change the brush here and you can get more of a different kind of stroke going on here um, it makes it look like I'm like writing a something here and you get like that stroke that stroke that stroke yeah sorry if I don't sound so exciting as like how my other videos are but it's artwork. You need to uh, actually concentrate and focus on the uh, aesthetic and stuff. 
Okay, so we can change the color of my wheat now and increase the brush size. You, so you just mix and match the brush and you just go from dark to light and mid-ground. It's like you make this lighter. You can actually make that light and fill in the blanks down here. So you get a ton of wheat that goes from, that becomes an endless field of it. The cool thing about digital art is that you can actually play with the layers and all that stuff. So you can do that and set up the wheat like this. It's like spaghetti doing hair or something. And you just mix and match with the dark ones. over it. Oops. Maybe the smart thing was uh, if you guys did the little back layer first, then you work your way upwards, then it would have been a little easier to fix. So we get the painterly look of the of a background instead of like all the time seeing it in realism I mean there's a realism still artwork here still but yeah, it gives it a little touch and difference and from here you can actually use the actual color again you can mix and match with the color here you can just like do this color since it's up close now when it's up close I guess the focus you would say the focus would be on the f foreground because that should be the most detailed looking uh, image out of all these here you are correct if that's if you thought of that which I will do the do that but uh, just give me a moment because I need to finish doing everything else back here basically I basically have to set up this stuff first before we can do uh, other things like that. So we get like a prairie ground of grass right there. But you guys get the idea of doing the backgrounds now, of setting up this stuff. And now we just got that there. I was quiet for a moment because I was just trying to finish this up as quickly as possible. But you, when you do this art kind of art stuff, you don't want to rush it. You just want to make sure everything is done right. I am a bad influence if I rush it. So I'm trying not to rush this thing. So you get the idea of the grass. Oh, undo that. Undo that. Whoa, I accidentally spin it around. Hold on. Uh, we'll try to turn it around again. Hold on. Uh, rotate. There we go. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> My fault. Okay, back to the painting. So you just basically do this. It might just take you an hour or so. Or less than that. It could be less. I don't know. Depends on which painting you're trying to do. And we'll choose white. 
I guess white. And then we'll do... Yeah, we'll do white of that. And we see... set that up that's the wheat thing that I am the details of the wheat and we'll just set that up and we'll just put that up there we go we got the wheat all set up there There we go, we got the wheat all set up here. Uh, it's all nice. Um, all right, so let me get the one more thing set up on this thing. I'm gonna do uh, some more, one more, one more fixing here. So we got that scenery all set up right there. So we got the wheat. We got all that. Um, so yeah, when you do the painting, you like to start with the background first. Or just like um, do something neat before you do the epic stuff. Don't... I mean, you can stick with the normal colors, uh, a triad color, more monochrome. I might explain that later in the future what those are and do videos of those and teach you guys how to do the painterly like way in a digital artwork. But yeah, that's basically how you do a scenery on, uh, on Photoshop. Or Manga Studio, a quick uh, a la prima like setting. And you can have it more cartoony looking too, because uh, if you're doing like stuff like, like if you're trying to do things for um, what you might call it, like similar to Samurai Jack style, you need to have like more cartoon like drawings than just this stuff here so yeah that's basically the fields yeah hope you guys enjoyed watching this video of doing an artwork uh, yeah so um, that's how it looks like guys I don't know you can see the mid ground the foreground mid ground background yeah that's basically how it's set up and that's how you do awesome like stuff check out uh, I mean try to find brushes out there on the internet you could find something that can do the painterly like or you can do brushes that do interesting things just play with a lot of the brushes basically and you can get nice sceneries things like this otherwise we will see you guys in the next video so I hope you guys enjoyed this so leave a like subscribe to Defensor Arts TV or you can check out our awesome social medias down below on the links yeah the descriptions down below should have the links to all the social medias down below there and list all listed from Twitter Instagram Facebook you name it so yeah check those out Otherwise, we will see you guys later. This is Levrak signing out. I hope you guys enjoyed this small art tutorial slash art process of doing, um, yeah. I guess this is a tutorial. Sorry if I haven't really called it a tutorial. I mean, it's a tutorial of just basically making a uh, scenery like that on a Photoshop or Manga Studio. So, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Peace. This is Levrak. Signing out. I've almost forgot to say that. So peace, everyone.